Dusty could be a world-class high jumper if he wanted to. To be 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and have that level of quickness, rhythm, footwork, and bounce, it's pretty rare. At the end of the day, that's kind of his superpower athletically. I was never like the strongest kid on the floor, so I kind of had to figure out how to work around that. I kind of was more of a shooter growing up. Recently, I started to round out my game a little bit more. My name is Dusty Stromer, and I'm a bucket. Fearlessness is what makes me the most proud of my son. He just gets thrown down, gets back up, and keeps going. I don't know how he does it. I mean, I'm always working on my mental side. I try to stay calm, just let the game come to me. I don't like to get too angry or too excited or too down on myself. I just stay even and level-headed. He can handle how hard this is and still love it so much. Probably what makes me the most proud of Dusty is just his continual improvement. I have some guys who will come in really good and they'll make a 1% improvement, a 5% improvement, but Dusty consistently makes 10, 15, 20% improvements. He doesn't stop. Most people just feel like, okay, I'm out, and he doesn't tap out. You could go off and play basketball because you love to play, but this is like real work. You gotta push through. Basketball players like don't really like lifting, but I enjoy it because I know I'm getting better. Especially with Paul, it makes it fun because it's all these different new movements. When I met Dusty, his uh, skills trainer had told me he's the next Tyler Hero. At first, I'm like skinny kid, I don't know. Wasn't super explosive, but what I noticed is he's really dedicated, he listened, takes directions well, and then he had really good quickness and rhythm. From there, I'm like, I know that this is a kid that I can work with. A big thing is he has a good family where He's raised the right way, his head is on straight. He comes in, I don't have to coach the grind is what I call it, he already got that. My mom is like the hardest working person I've ever met. She just doesn't stop. My dad, he's driven me miles and miles to all my games and practices and training. It's definitely rubbed off on me. I've been able to watch them work their tails off to give me all these opportunities. This basketball thing, there's so many ups and downs. You could have a great game one night and have not so good game the next night. It's like a, a roller coaster of emotion. With uh, a social media following and being in the public eye, sometimes if you don't come out and perform, you'll have a lot of people saying, you're this and you're that. It's something I'm trying to navigate around, just being able to stay level-headed and not get too high and too low when things get bad. When COVID became a thing where we were all staying at home, school for Dusty online was really challenging. This is torture for a person who already needs to be moving. We pulled him out of school and he just trained. At that point, Eric's mom was living here. She was not well, but living here in the house. Dusty needed to train, so he said, I'll sleep in a tent, because he was in all these gyms. and. Eric's mom is 86 and in the house. So we put a tent in the back and we gave him his food outside, but he did it and trained and he just got really good. Last summer in Peach Jam is when it first started to really take off my recruitment and even Section 7 before that. I'm so glad people didn't tell me what Section 7 really was because we get there, the coaches from everywhere lined up. I didn't know this was the scene. He had so much to prove and so much to lose. This is his road, good or bad, this is his road. I just remember getting very emotional because it looked like he had wings on. In that game, it looked like he was flying. I was completely under the radar before, no one really knew me. Then I came out and I just played and then it started to take off. It's a blessing, you know, to be in this position and to have schools that you used to watch on TV reach out to you. It's a really cool feeling. I never had to push him or tell him to get in the car to go train. He guides us, he leads us. I'm so proud of somebody that finds what they love and pursues it. Around like seven years old when my brother's best friend Trevor put the ball in my hands, we would play over in the pool with the little ball and I just shoot all day. 
When I just fell in love with it super, super fast, I would just be on YouTube all night watching all the basketball I could. Dusty's basketball influence, I think, came primarily from his grandfather. He was a co-founder of the Indiana Pacers. It was kind of in my blood, got the love for the game from him. Dusty was taught to shoot originally by this guy named Billy Keller who was the three-point champion in the ABA back in the 70s. Shooting is one of my strengths. I feel like I have really good court vision and I see the floor really well. I can sort of see plays before they happen. But that comes from just all the reps since I was a little kid. And I've always been a pretty good shooter, but I just get better and better and better as I put up more and more shots. You're so lucky in life if you can find something that you love on the level that he loves this. When you love something, no days off means you are doing a life where you never quit. No days off isn't necessarily physically no days off, but it's no days off mentally. You can be a warrior and courageous and vulnerable. That's badass. You got to do your thing 100% so they have something to look at to see and be inspired by. That's no days off. No days off for me is kind of like my lifestyle. You got to put in the work. You got to do the time if you want to shine when the lights are on.